Hey, hey, FME family. Welcome back to another episode of From My Experience podcast. I am your co-host, Jessica Fountain, and I am here with co-host Rob. Uh, so it's a little bit different intro today. I am welcoming you guys. Rob's trying to put me to work and utilize me in some different ways. So I'm going to need all the positive energy for this episode as I lead the way. Um, I hope that we find you in great holiday spirits. And if you're not, then no worries, because after this episode, hopefully you should be feeling a little bit better because we have some tips and tricks and some just transparency on what the holidays mean to us as we round 2020. It's been a hell of a year. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host with the most, Mr. Rob Wilson. Why, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. And how are you, Jessica? <laughs> I am well. How are you? How is your week? Uh, um, it's been interesting. I'm I wasn't ready. I was like in a really good workflow. And then now that work has kind of stopped, this work has been very uh, stop and go. But now that it's stopped for a while, I got to get my life together. But I am very relaxed. Um, I enjoyed my boy's day, um, y'all. So this is the week yes. after my boy's day. It's like three days after. We're not even at a week yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, by the time they hear this. but um, No, yeah, this is true. This yeah. is true. Yeah, it's a couple of days after. Uh, things went well. I just, uh, you know, relaxed, had some of my favorite foods, got a couple gifts. Oh. But, oh. um... Every... <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to enlighten the family? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um... Well, I thought I'd ask for, for everybody, all your nosy cousins out there in the world. They want to know. Um, but, well, I'm glad that you had a great birthday. Um... I would like to, again, wish you a happy birthday. I'm just so thankful for your life and the light that you shine into the world and into this broadcast, and you're very impactful. Um, and I, you always talk about me vibrating higher. I hope that you continue to vibrate higher and continue to impact the surroundings in which you go into. So, yeah, I'm thankful for you. I'm Happy birthday, well. friend. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here and to be here with you. Well, great. So without further ado, well, before we get started, tell them where everyone can find you. So we get all of that out of the way. So if you want to get connected with us um, outside of the podcast, um, you can find myself at exposure, E-X-P-O-Z-H-E-R. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Facebook and at Lash and Soul, which is my bread and butter beauty and wellness salon. Uh, so, Rob, how can they find you? On Instagram, complete underscore vision, complete being spelled with a K. Um, you can follow the podcast as well, F-M-E underscore podcast. And um, on Facebook, From My Experience Podcast, we have a group and we have a page. Ooh. So like, follow, and subscribe. Please. That's a birthday yeah. gift. If you want to give me a birthday gift, yeah, like, follow, subscribe. Especially join that Facebook group. I'm here for that. So, tackling the holiday blues. Oh. It seems that mm. this is a time of the year that can be triggery for a lot of us. We, um, I mean, everyone in some way. And 2020 is bringing it in a whole nother way. So with that said, like, how are we like addressing these these blues and this, this stuff that seems to be, it's just triggers around every corner tucked behind all these Christmas trees that are so brightly lit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How you feel about it? Uh, I have a couple different perspectives. For the person who's alone or by themselves, um, that's the shoes that I'm in this year. I didn't travel anywhere, didn't go anywhere. And my Christmas is usually like uh, family coming into town. We're at somebody's houses. We're meeting up. 
we're drinking, we're doing all these things, we're catching up, and I don't have that this year. Uh, but I'm also an introvert, so this personally doesn't bother me because I can sit here with all my stuff and have uh, my own little house party and play video games and eat and drink and be married by myself and I'm fine. Um, but those of you who aren't okay with that, um, have a Zoom party with your friends. Call them. Check on them. Play some music around the house. Read a book. There's so many things you can do around this time. Or, even better, um, find somewhere where you can volunteer and give to others. That right there, because, you know, everything's not peachy for everyone still. I mean, with or without COVID, everything is not peachy with everyone. So I would definitely uh, challenge you to uh, do that. It will not challenge you. I would advise you to do that if you're feeling some type of way about the holidays. Just uh, get a different perspective and view on things. I agree. Um, really being mindful when you are when you are in low, these lower spaces or things are triggering you to shifting to gratitude always seems to help me. Like... Um, and sometimes the heart, the shift is not like a smooth transition, like an automatic transition in your car. Like sometimes you got to literally clutch it and get it to gratitude. But once you do, I find that it, it very much, um, calms me, eases me mentally. And it makes me recognize like I really was in my head. It really isn't that bad. And, uh, someone challenged me this week with that, where I was kind of really frustrated business wise. Mm -hmm. And then they brought up a point that was just a year ago of where I was in, in the business and what I was talking to them about at that point. And then looking at where I am now and four years ago when I wasn't even a entrepreneur full time. So those, um, that little timeline, it was just like, yeah, this is true. And it's not always what we want to hear because sometimes we do we do like the funk of it. Like we like being in the funk. Yeah. It's a cycle. It's a it just like leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm just trying. But um I think if we can challenge ourselves to kind of get over that, um it it's a lot better. We had a moment of that a couple of weeks ago where you was funky, I was funky, I called you, and then by the end it's like, whew, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's better. It, like it, 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 we're gonna figure it out. It's not, it's not as bad as it seems to be. So, volunteering, changing to gratitude, um, finding things that bring you peace, bring you joy. For me, trying new recipes. I'm a foodie, so sometimes like just shaking it up in the kitchen is helpful. Oh yeah. Centering yourself around people that love you, that adore you, like all of that. I just feel like love on yourself and recognize that this is just a season, a season of like intensity, but you control it and you have the ability to um, participate or not participate as you feel and like process your feelings. I would, I would definitely advise not to shut them up because, uh, suppressing them, whether it, it is sadness or it is grief, anything, um, that has you, brings you lower to not suppress it and really write that down, write that you feel frustrated or yeah. I'm not into the holiday spirit or share that with a friend who you're really close with and express it in transparency because just being able to let it out instead of keeping it in, um, it breaks it and causes, it kind of um, breaks it up a little bit. Um, so that would be my advice. Anything else, Rob? Uh, yeah. Um, another thing you can do is to... And one of my friends is doing this. She didn't have a uh, shout out to you, Emily. She didn't have the best Christmas memory. So she bought a tree. She put up a tree. She wrapped her gifts. She's still going to go home for the holidays, but she said she's going to wrap her gifts and put them under the tree and unwrap the gifts on Christmas. Um, so create your own Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas or holidays, however you want to call it, create your own traditions for yourself. Start something new that you enjoy, that you want to do. So take those negative memories and turn them into positive ones that's how we break these curses generational curses yes i like that one a lot start your own traditions because a lot of this we're triggered by 
past expectations, like yes. past things that are no longer, and they died out, The pro whatever that looked like, is no longer happening. But then we feel like that is what Christmas is. Like, create your own thing and make it your own thing. Like, your tree doesn't have to look like everybody's tree. You don't have to have the same type of decorations. You don't have to get this, like, gifts. Um, which kind of brings me to our next point is to give or not. Are you a gift giver? Huh? Ha! Me? <laughs> you? Um... <laughs> I'm running out. I just saw something I want to talk to you about. That's like interesting. I, I need you to show me a trick and now uh, the Google thing. I didn't know you could do that. Um, I'm jealous. That would have helped last time. <laughs> no, sorry. No, it's Speaking good. Speaking of it's which, good. I mean, it's gonna, I'm going to actually discuss that today because we have a couple of things that we want to talk about. So quickly, we can go through to give or not, nah, and then we can kind of move into the next thing, which is something yeah, that aligns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm in a different space. So last year I was in a relationship. So Christmas was about me and her. Um, and I'm weird when it comes. So mm, my nephew, my mom, my brother always get gifts typically, uh, especially my mom. My mom usually gets her gift early because my mom, you know, what she wants in like June. And I usually buy it then and ship it and tell her not to open it. And she opens it anyway. Uh <laughs> But on the regular, I, that's a, that's, if you're doing something in June, like you really giving gifts, gifts. I'm like here. <laughs> yeah, she got her birthday. Her birthday's at the end of September, and I think I mailed her gift like at the first week or the second week. She definitely opened it before birthday. Um, I'm I I don't know. It's hard for me to be a gift giver because I know so many people, and I feel like gifts should be authentic. Um. I did buy someone a gift this year. Hello. Uh, I actually, Hello. I actually Hello. gave it to her on my birthday. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. You, you I, I, forgot. I, I gave it to her <laughs> on my birthday, but um, it was just a little something like, but like, gift, gift, like going out, wrapping gifts. Like, if I'm not in a relationship, or or we're not like deep, 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 then I'm probably not going to get you anything crazy or wild. Um, but this year it's just like my mom got a gift and that was pretty much it. Uh, so, but normally I, I am a gift giver and it's hard for me too, because I have a lot of little cousins, second cousins. Like I think there's like eight of them. So it's like, I got to be careful. Cause it's like, you can't give three of them something and then not the rest. So it's like, I want to get better at strategizing <laughs> And planning yes. for it so that by the time Christmas gets here, even if it's just a churn, which is probably who I'm going to focus on. Because, like, my cousins, we all the same age or a little older. So, like, I'll probably focus on the churn. Or, may oh, you know what? Maybe we should do, like, a thing where we, like, because we have a cousins group on Facebook. Maybe we should do a thing where we, like, Gift right. exchange. Yeah, gift exchange. You get someone's name and you get them boy a gift. Yeah. And that's something that I really wanted, I want to implement in my family, which... I mean, we got a little bit of time. We don't even have to, we could do an after Christmas exchange, but I feel like that's the most practical. Um, and I'm a person, so I'm a little traumatized by the holidays and I didn't realize how much, Rob. Like, first it was the Christmas tree, then it was the, like I've always in, thoroughly enjoyed the holiday season as a kid. But I didn't realize that something bruised this energy because mm -hmm. now I I used I always was known for giving great gifts. I don't give a lot of gifts these days. I have godchildren, a mother, sisters. <laughs> Ain't nobody getting no gifts. <laughs> My nieces and nephews don't get a gift, which is very shocking coming from me because I think a lot of people would assume that I am. Mrs. Claus over here, elves and shit, like, <laughs> <laughs> folding. And it's not because I don't really do the whole, I don't just want to buy. Don't give me a list. That's not, that to me seems impersonable. Impersonal? What's the word? In Impersonal. Pers 
Impersonal. I was yeah. saying impersonable. <laughs> Putting a little fa la 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 on my words. <laughs> you got eggnog over there? You see? No. See? So you told me when I'm on one. Right. <laughs> fa la la la. I don't know. What? I don't know what has me tickled today. But uh, <sighs> no, there's nothing. Like, I'm just in a good space. But uh, yeah, so impersonal. Yes, that's the word. So, I don't really give a lot of gifts. I do love giving gifts when I do, when I, the times that I give gifts, but generally around this time. So, as I told you before the show started, I'm thinking I'll be doing a New Year's gift, starting the new year fresh. And I think that that's going to be, I'm going to channel that energy because I'm not going to disturb my peace of trying to do all of this now in six days. And I feel like that is being realistic. It will spin me out. And who has time for that? So I'm going to just take it on into 2021 with gratitude. There you go. <laughs> that's, all, that's all we got to do. Sometimes you got to hit the reset button and figure reset. out how you want to do something moving forward. Because I always talk about this. You have the power to change and you have the power to choose. So choose. Say, I don't like this anymore. I want to do this like this. Yep. So, uh... With that being said, what's the best gift you ever got received? Okay. Uh, this is from my childhood. Um, Mom, I love you. I throw a little shade. Um, I may have told this story before, but my parents were divorced at this time, and my dad could not come home for Christmas, and he lived in New Jersey, and we were in Charleston. I told him I wanted a PlayStation, PS1, right? and it didn't come to charleston and i remember my mom's side of the family some people were kind of i don't know i felt like there was i don't remember what was said but it was kind of like the vibe was oh it's okay you know blah 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 he probably didn't send it or blah 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 um which i don't know why they felt that way because my dad always provided whether he was there or not but anyway we got back home, and I would say maybe, I forget when we got home, but it was before, it was either right before New Year's or right after New Year's, it showed up to the house. Um, and I was just like, I told you! <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you said it just like that. Yeah, I did. I did. Because <laughs> uh, I remember it. And i never forget this. My dad did not even put it in a box. He just wrapped the <laughs> postal stuff around the seams of the actual PlayStation game box and just mailed it. Uh -uh. Well, this, this is before is this is before the era we're in now, where everybody just stealing your shit. Back then, exactly, you, know. you took the words out of my yeah. mouth. I said this was back when people was honest. <laughs> yeah, this was nine. Whenever PlayStation One came out, this had to, uh, I was in coupons, so it couldn't have been past ninety six. It was probably ninety four, ninety five when I got that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not today. You would have had today, no. a box. <laughs> I wouldn't have had that. That's just... Right. That was they probably it, though. took the effort to, to give that to you. I really have uh -huh. to think, but that's definitely um, at the top of the list. What about you? Well, uh... I, I had a whole nother angle. You got all deep on me. Oh, I was God. really shallow in my gift. It was like the best gift that I, I was just like, why? Yes, yes. And it's such a simple gift. Okay, so I'm going to give both. My my most used is what I was thinking when I said best gift. Like the most functional Um, was this rice cooker that my aunt gave me. And it's lasted like at least 11 years. And I love that thing. Like I use it all the time. And if y'all don't have, if you need, first of all, who has time to stand over a pot to cook rice in 2020? Because rice is something that <laughs> it is going, unless, let me correct this, unless you are trying to work on mindfulness, <laughs> you should not be cooking rice in a pot. Because a rice cooker, all you have to do is put in the rice. I use chicken broth. Put in the chicken broth and olive oil and a little bit of salt, a little bit. Stir, push a button, walk away, go be productive, find your life, 
decompress and voila, there's rice. I need a rice cooker. You don't have to worry about the overboil. You don't have to worry about those little milky, starchy bubbles boiling out. Like, who has time? I need a rice cooker. You do. I bought I'm a bad too- one one time. And, and now they come high tech. I have a little simple one. It, it probably, my aunt, I mean, she probably spent $15 or less on it, but the magnitude of it changing my life forever and always, and I will never do that anymore <laughs> in my lifetime. <laughs> it is forever my favorite gadget. And so that's one of them. And then, I mean, I have a thousand childhood memories. Like my Christmas oh, as a child was great. Yeah. I got a kitchen. I got uh, <laughs> a playhouse. I was so domestic. And these things excited me. <laughs> I had a custom playhouse, though. My grandfather bit my my playhouse, and it was pink. And I didn't even like pink, but I like that playhouse. I got a, uh, I remember I got a power wheel Jeep. I used to drive the hell out of that thing. <laughs> Gone, bro. It was a red power wheel Jeep. <sighs> I'm sorry, everyone, for that obnoxious noise <laughs> well they listen to my laugh every week so i don't know yeah. if you get more obnoxious than that yeah this is true this is off back so what else have i gotten um bikes the bikes were always good to get a bike oh my that's... first laptop that was my freshman year of college oh yeah i got my first laptop that was a big gift that was like Productivity and kitchen things, you are have won with me, even if I don't need it. <laughs> you hear that, fellas? Like, it's still a win because it's like, wow, like, what can I do with this? Like, I really enjoy kitchen stuff, um, anything culinary related or anything productivity related, which. <laughs> Doing the most right now. I'm in the chair. I'm just saying. doing the most I'm, right now. I am doing the most. That's my drum roll. <laughs> all right. So for all the entrepreneurs I hit there here, this is for you. I know that we have had a interest in 2020, and it some. I mean, we planned, we put it all out there, and some shit just did not get done. And that's just the reality of it. It it was a different year. It was a year of adjustments, alignments, uh, strategy. And so I wanted to shift gears to those that are thinking, and this not even just to entrepreneurs. Uh, Entrepreneurs, I think, will feel it uh, more strongly. But even within personal goals, if there is something that we personally wanted to overcome, some people lost weight, gained weight in COVID. Uh, that went both ways, depending on what your goals are. So just how you can finish this year up strong and not feel totally defeated by 2020. Because it was a rough year for us all. And I feel like we say that every week since the year began. <laughs> this has been a difficult year, but yeah, 2020 has been challenging, but <laughs> so... <laughs> I wanted to like talk about how we can finish strong. And one way that I've been learning is write, well, write everything down. It ain't even what I've been learning. That's like an old lesson. Write it down and write down specifically what, um, what are your weaknesses? Where are your strengths? And you want to kind of do a SWOT analysis of either your business or your life. And so just looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, areas um, of that you can change, and I forget what the T is for. Threats. Threats. There we go. Thank you. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Look at you. My uncle, one of my mentors, taught me that when I was trying to figure my life out. This is one the, yeah, right. SWOT analysis. When you're, tra- when you're at transitional spaces, which I think we are transitioning into hopefully a better year, better perspective. Like we, we learned some lessons collectively, um, this year. Um, so I think that we are all in a transition to a new year in a whole nother capacity than we have been in years before. Uh, so with that, just taking an analysis of your life and asking yourself, what, where am I strong at? Where am I weak at? Uh, 
What was the A again? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. Opportunities. S W O T. It's not A T. Yeah, you can see the confusion on my face. I saw it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's it's not like SWAT like a SWAT team, y'all. It's S W O T. Maybe there's another acronym out there, but that's the one I had Thank learned. You. Thank you, Rob. You spoke to you spoke to the O because I was lost <laughs> and I came up with this, but I know what it means. Mm -hmm. I know the gist of it. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. So anyway, opportunities, opportunities you can capitalize off of in thing areas that like that are threatening your progress. So if you want to be more right. active, but you're not committed, you're eating everything under the sun, and you're not really taking your health seriously, then that's a threat to you losing weight. It's a threat to your main goal. And so same in business. Um, and part of that is adding some systems to it. And we're this is like a, what would you call this uh, conversation? More of a appetizer portion. Yes. Because uh, it definitely can be an entree full episode topic. But just to get your gears turning and uh, try to transition us to a more productive, whole, positive year in 2021, just doing the SWOT analysis uh, and then also implementing some systems that help you. And so one of those systems that I've been using uh, is the Google the whole Google family. So from Gmail yeah. to their more recently we're using right now, uh, Google keep and they are not an affiliate, uh, but maybe they one day might be sponsoring us, you know? So keep, Hey Google. Hey Google. So that app is really great because you can do so much with it and you can share it really effortless where me and Rob have shared notes and they're in a actual kind of space that is for note taking and you can arrange it and you can tag it. Um, I use it in a different system that I'm working with. Um, if you have any project management systems, things like that. So I don't want to talk over our audience's head, but you can use this in so from life and business. And yes. I think it's a great app. So, yeah. Um, a couple of things. I have a spin actually on what you, on everything you just said. One, this is a great time to, like Jessica just said, strengthen your foundation. Like she introduced me to some apps and some systems that I can use because, and they're were, they were great and impactful for me because I was basically used to working alone and doing a lot of stuff administratively on my own, not really collaboratively so these tools that she's introduced me to they're easily accessible and they're great collaborative tools um shout out to natasha carter she showed me you know we both have apple phones so we have notes that we share you know so using those collaborative tools helps um two things i have two things for y'all to think about uh, and they both involve a heavy and highly um disciplined person for you to be able to do this and it's a very big mind shift change um and i'm pretty sure jessica does this and you didn't say it but i know you do it because you work for yourself you you use your own boss yo i don't even look at like i i think about the next week like i, I cancel out the whole oh in 2021 or next year blah 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 like I just, it's it for me, I look at it as a continuous flow. Real estate taught me that and my mentor taught me that because there is no, there was no downtime for me. There was no Christmas break. Like I was working like two days before Christmas and the day after Christmas, I'm showing houses. Like there's no, <laughs> there's not that, that stop at the end of the year. Like there was a constant state of reflecting improvement. Not saying you got to be in it all the time, but kind of treat it like that. Um, kind of treated like I, I need to do better. I need to do this, blah, blah, blah. Like if you want to do the whole, hey, next year in 2021 thing, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But another way to look at it is let me continue my mo momentum. For instance, I already have booked, how many interviews I have booked? I think I put them all on the calendar. <laughs> There's already four. We already have four interviews booked for next year already. 
And this is a great time to reconnect. If you're a person in a client-driven business, this is a great time to call and speak with and check in on clients. If you are in, if you need more networking or to do more networking, this is a lot of times where people slow down, where they're probably more available for a conversation. This is a great time. I'm trying to book the shit out of some interviews right now because I know some people are off work or they're taking some time off. So I know you're home. You're going to fill out my questionnaire. Love y'all. You're going to fill out the questionnaire and yes. you're looking at your schedule. And I'm getting you before you get busy. I'm catching you before you get too busy and I can't get you. So that's another thing. Cause So I'm taking advantage of that. Um, but also doing a bit of what uh, Jessica said. You know, we have our weekly huddles and I'm looking at our huddle items and I, I got to map out. All right, I need to have these things done. So these systems are solid and we're just going to keep it rolling. But um, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Don't wait. Don't shut down. Don't stop. Just keep it rolling. But yeah, tighten those yeah. things I up. Think that, I think that's a great point because in, I know we talked about a lot of 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I, I do exactly what you're talking about. That rolling schedule. These are... I think opportunities when you're talking on a platform to transition because they're like these big dates, but it's very important in your real life to do what you just said, to be thinking ahead and be having targets ahead of you at all times. So when 2021, you can't be hyper-focused on 2021, the debt, like the numbers of yeah. that, like hearing it, yeah. the phonetics of it and not the actual application of what that is. I have the next 12 months is what is what that translates, well, should translate in your life and in your calendar. So the next 12 months, what are what is my game plan? Okay, that's, I, I've identified that. So then now we have to break that down into uh, four quarters. So Q1, this is what I want to get accomplished. Q2, this is what I want to get accomplished and so on. And then as you keep breaking these things down, you're ultimately at your day-to-day -day agenda. And so as you're moving through that day-to-day -day agenda and you're using these new systems, it's so much easier to keep up with your life. But a lot of us are, are still like, we're so exhausted by the current space that we're in. Mm -hmm. So like today is really easy to say, 2021 because it's like this futuristic concept of everything's going to change in this new space but then what what we find is we get there we get to 2021 and then we didn't have any of these planning systems procedures processes in place so therefore we now are like well next month i'm going to and we'll do that for a lifetime like we'll do that for years until you realize it is no it's no next it's like the next is the time that's approaching but the time is now so the yes. time is now for me to be addressing what's happening ahead and how what can i do now that will be that will set that up for me because these are all setups like you're, you, everything we're doing is strategy, is setting it up to to allow ourselves to get to the next big objective or the next big goal. And I was telling someone today, I I started saying entrepreneurs because that's how I, I speak a lot to entrepreneurs and from an entrepreneur mindset. But with that being said, you will never be good in business if you're not like until you address like personal. You have to address these things on a personal level and they mimic business. So in life, we call it, in business, you call it an objective, but in life, you call it a goal. Like, and so all of these different things, they're not different processes, but in order to master making money at something, you have to master it first, living it and being it. And so once you can do it for your own self and plan out and thinking ahead and really doing this kind of time management, looking ahead, scope, because you know it's coming if you're alive, like then you can master like making money off of that thing. But if you're not doing that for yourself, like what, where do I want to be a year from now? Do I want to speak this language that I keep saying that I want to do, but I haven't really put in the time and effort to do it? Do I want to lose weight? Do I want to buy this house? 
I want to be a homeowner. These are, I'm stepping on a lot of toes, I'm pretty sure, by speaking it because some mm-hmm. of this stuff I stepped on my own first. Like, yes. these are things that I said I wanted, but then I had no strategy in place to achieve those things. So it's not impossible. You just have to find out what, what, where your parameters are, where your boundaries are, which is why we talk a lot about boundaries and setting those things. Cause if you can't do them for yourself, you'll never be able to do it in a business capacity. Here's the other thing that will help y'all out. And then I'm gonna shut up two things. You just hit the nail on the head. One, you need to put actionable steps in front of you and you have to take action y'all like it's you got to take action talk is cheap anybody can talk about it anybody can make it sound good anybody can sell you a dream what yep. steps are you taking what did what did you do to put one foot in front of the other so that you are in a better position today than you were yesterday um crap i lost it oh my gosh i should have wrote it down like you i'm about to cry i'm sorry um it happens i forget all the time so y'all bear with me on that i'm working on it but yes i mean the actionable steps are oh yeah yeah, here we go are important number two this is a big one so i'll use podcasting podcasting is a a very a lot of them are but this is a very free and open creative space and if you don't have your personal stuff together, as well as your business stuff together, outside influences will end up trying to dictate how you do things and what you should be doing. But it's your vision, it is your dream. So it should look the way that you want. It should make you feel that the way that you want it to make you feel. You know what I'm saying? You know what your objectives are, you know what your goals are. Yeah, you're gonna have to attach and bring some other elements in but at the end of the day, it's yours. So remember yeah. that because everyone's gonna, everyone can look at this podcast. I could put my podcast in front of a hundred different people, and a hundred different people will have suggestions, ideas, and opinions about how I should do things and what and why I should do it, and blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, I know what I wa- I know what I'm getting from this, and I know what I want from it. So I'm gonna yeah. keep doing the things that cater to that. Versus, you- this- go ahead. Sorry. No, go. No, what you're saying is very true. And on the flip side, you'll get to these pockets of frustration or yes. like you'll feel like a, it's a tenseness that you feel in your chair, like chest, almost like um, like your breath, like you can't find your breath. And it's like, Ugh, I want to do this, but uh, and you, you can't put your, you just seem frustrated when you feel like that, that, that space is identifying that you just haven't worked it out yet. Like, it's not stop. It's not, I'm not supposed to be doing it. And it's not that your dream is false, like, or your vision is false. Mm -hmm. It is the universe saying, okay, but it's not in alignment yet. You you haven't found the right, like, space, the peg, like a puzzle piece. It's just not fit yet. But that doesn't mean that piece doesn't belong in the puzzle you're just not at the space where it's making sense and you can utilize it so sometimes you have to put that piece down and go look at other pieces in the puzzle and then it's like oh i remember let me go get that other piece or mm. it's like you you have to just take a minute all together and like just assess it all all again it just comes to you so i have moved now it's three years i'm going into four and that would be the takeaway i've felt that so many times and going back to what you said rob about don't allow other people to saturate that with their doubt their negative energy their fears for you because people will be scared for you because they want great things for you even the people that love you they want greatness for you but sometimes their fear is bigger than bigger than they even know it. So they're scared for you and them now. And now they're projecting that and they want you to be scared because they just don't want you to fail. And they, they but they're, they don't realize that they're bringing their baggage of trauma to the situation, but you have already had a download of, this is what I want to do with my life. And it's very real to you and you can see it, you can smell it when you allow yourself to go into that space. But then instantly we let these like, triggery things like around us, our our environments, like 
polluted. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, stay, stay with it. Center yourself. I've been listening to like podcast, <laughs> YouTube, um, yes. like a lot, like a lot lately because I've been working my butt off behind the scenes and I, I want, I get so frustrated sometimes in the work and it's not like, cause I hate the work. It's just like, dang, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I don't know how to do this and mm -hmm. I'm struggling. And you have to have either a circle of people that get that and will speak to that and motivate you to get back on. Like if you were a parent and your child fell off of the bike, you're not going to say, put the bike up, never ride a bike again. You should never ride a bike. You're going to say, it's okay. Get back on. Just put, make sure your knee pads are on. Do we need to adjust the training wheels? Like whatever it is, you make the simple adjustment, the smaller adjustment adjustment before you start like totally, you don't start taking the part, the bike down yeah. or throwing yeah. it out, like and trashing it. Like you just make an adjustment. And so Stay with it because this stuff pays off um, financially, emotionally, spiritually, like every way that you think you can be transformed when you follow your dreams and you follow your vision, it will, um, it will blow your mind. Like it will have you, I feel like tapping into yourself and tapping into your abilities and like your goals and your vision, it, that to me is like it's helped me like just trust the universe and God in a very deep way. Like it's been like an anchor and it's because I know who I am as a person. Like I know Jessica yes, and I yes. know she, she cannot get it right sometimes. <laughs> same, same. Here. And, and I also know, dang, look what I did. Like, I cannot believe I did that. Right. And I know that that's not just my natural ability to be able to do it, but more of something that when you put your head down on something and you really like do the work and you really set positive intentions and pray and write things out and manifest them, like they happen for real. And I mean, that's it. Like, I, it's not too late. Like, some people would think it's too late to, to have, uh, to wrap this up positively. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of people assume that positive means financial, but positive doesn't always necessarily mean financial. Or you can wrap it up in peace. You can wrap it up in knowing that you gave it your best, forgiving yourself, and loving yourself. You can wrap it up in like. I will not take this into no, no other, not year, but chapter of my life. <laughs> right. I am going into everything from this. This is, it might as well be New Year's today because from, exactly. from today on, I am not doing this. I am not allowing, I'm not going to beat myself up. And if I do, and it's a subconscious thing, then when I am conscious of it, I am going to repeal those thoughts. Like I'm speaking life into my life. I'm not going to say, I can't, I want, like, you have to be conscious of the words. And it's not that we don't ever say them, because we do. And then we recognize it, or somebody calls us out on it, and it's like, yeah, you're right. Nope, take it out. Erase. Auto-delete. <laughs> like, so. Yes. I, that, that's, that's my spiel. Um, we were going to get into the lessons and blessings, but I think that that, in a nutshell, like for me is the lesson and the blessing of this year. It's been a year of very, very low lows, but then it's also been a year of opportunity um, where we have had the opportunity to look at ourselves in a very intimate way and not feel the scrutiny of other people. Because before, if you stepped back from people and, and community, it was like, why are why aren't you coming to the party? I was looking for you. You didn't come to the baby shower. You didn't come to the wedding. You didn't go to the happy hour. You didn't do this. And people were just like feeding off of us. And we we felt so connected to it that you cannot disconnect because yep. you don't want to be the person that never shows up to these things. But this was a year for us to sit down with ourselves and say, I've been putting away doing this home renovation for three years. 
and here we are now stuck in the house or an office mm -hmm. and you wanted an office space or you wanted to work from home or all of these things that you wanted to grow a garden. I saw people growing gardens. I saw people doing riding bikes and getting out, taking hikes. There's more people out doing nature-esque things than ever before in my my generation of living. Like I haven't seen this type of stuff unless I go traveling abroad where people walk and, you know, actually move. There's a lot more movement. But I think that that has been the ultimate blessing and lesson of this year. And it's created an opportunity for us to get it right. So there's not really one specific thing except for that in itself for me. Um, I have <laughs> You're things. smiling. You're like... Because you gave me so many, so many so nuggets. Many. Um, I have three things, and I'm going to tie it back into what you said earlier about um, putting that puzzle piece to the side and just coming back to it later. Um, <laughs> I, this is going to sound bad, but um, one of the biggest... I have three things, basically. So one of them was the end of my relationship. Um, it wasn't abusive or anything crazy like that, but... This, the way I used to be was a relationship would come in and a lot of what I wanted to do or thought I wanted to do or wanted to pursue would get pushed to the side because I prioritized the relationship over personal wants, needs, goals, satisfactions. And the end of that relationship um, and just, just engaging and interacting with new people taught me that that doesn't have to be the case, nor should it be the case. You can have your own personal things and that relationship can have its space as well. Both of those two things can exist. Um, so I definitely learned that. Um, number two, just the, uh, well, I'll transition in order. After that, um, I met someone, shout out to you, Jaleesa. Jaleesa has been like one of the biggest blessings, um, period. Like the conversations we have, just a transparency. Um, I want to put her business out there, but we both have been through some things. And when we met, I mean, it just like the conversations we had, the daily talks, the way we motivate each other, like it just is awesome. And I'm very, very thankful for her because she showed up like exactly when I needed someone like that to kind of help shift and change my mindset. And we had the same birthday. So shout out to you, Jaleesa. Um, lastly, would be the changes to the podcast and the growth. Um, back to what I said earlier about knowing your vision, knowing your dream, knowing how you want things to operate and linking that with what you said about the puzzle pieces. Those of you who listen, who know, and I'm not gonna harp on this, I've ha we've had multiple co-hosts on here. Like the people I started with aren't here anymore. I'm the last one left and stay true to the show, stay true to the passion of the show. And one of the things that I always said I needed was a strong female co-host. Um, my goal was three or four people total. We'll see where that goes, but I needed, like there was a lot of things. I wasn't advertising. I wasn't really pushing and building a lot of stuff because I said, I need her. I want her in place because I want my foundation to be strong because if my foundation is strong, no matter what I do after that, I can tear it down because I have a strong foundation. I don't want to have a weak foundation because if I have a weak foundation and I build on top of that and it crumbles, everything crumbles. The infrastructure is gone. And along came Jessica. And when I say I just threw her in there, y'all, and I think I might have said this a few times, I threw her in there. And she has done, without me asking, has helped me do exactly what I've been needing, which is strengthening the, strengthening the foundation. I had a good frame. But she came in there with the furniture and the paint and the feng shui. You know, I was like the brick and the concrete and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, that's a strong building. Let's get inside and beautify this thing. Let's make it flow. <laughs> Let's make it operate, right? She was like the electrical wiring and like the plumbing. Like, it just fit. So now, you know, it's, it's way better than it ever has been. And now I'm far more comfortable with putting certain things out there and taking advantage of other opportunities 
because I know the communication is strong. We both know what we're do we both know what we're doing and how we should be doing it. And there's a natural flow and energy. So it's like, all right, let's go. If that doesn't work, we can reset because we already know where we came from, which is already a good space. And I really needed that. And the listeners, knowing that more and more people are listening feels great because I know that there's no way people can listen to these episodes and not pull away something positive, which is what we want. So those are like my three big you always do that. <laughs> no, you have no idea, man. I, I was like that, that, and those of you, you probably, you know, people probably recognize that stretch. Some people were like, yo, Rob, you should just do it solo. And I'm like, one, I don't like to hear myself talk, but two is like, I don't want to sit here and talk. I want to, I don't want to sit here and talk for 15, 20 minutes about stuff. I've done solo episodes because I had to, because people didn't show up. And then hence when I started cranking out a lot more interviews, like I was like booking, 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 booking. And that's a lot of pressure because if someone doesn't, doesn't show up as we know, <laughs> or, you know, they forget now I got to put on a show. But when you have a strong co-host, me and, me and Jessica can do shows all year. We don't have to have interviews, but they're fun. They're a great way to mix things up and to give you guys more information and different points of view. But when you got that one-two punch, it's a great feeling to know that I got at least one person that I know has my back, like for real. So that, that like, it's a big comfort and it gives you space. It takes some stuff off of your plate. So now you got room for something else. Or you might want to leave that space free, but you know what? I'm going to put my feet up. I'm going to just relax but right yes. and that's the thing that was that's the that's a nugget that's a nugget because so often we want to get like we don't want to share like truly share uh -huh. like you'll give somebody something like I'll, I'll do an exchange of some sorts but to share something means like i feel like it's valuable to you so that's where the transparency and we don't want to give up our value because it's really a lack mentality. For me to give you value, you're thinking that I gave you, I chipped away from my value. But when you start shifting to abundance, going back to giving, now you're investing. Mm -hmm. And so when you do it with an investment, you put in a little bit, but it grows and doubles. Like that's the intention of an investment. And I think that we are such, we're so traumatized by past relationships, whether they're business or personal, that we don't allow ourselves the space to be transparent, which doesn't allow us to collaborate or date. Like oh, those are same, like we can't, we can't, <laughs> I can't with you. So you can't, you don't want to collaborate, which means when you cannot share, you cannot multiply. Collaboration is about multiplication and it, it grows you and it's abundance. And it's not just, we're not talking about money. We're talking about collaborating in an idea. You take something that is like collaboration creates companies, innovative spaces like Uber. There was always taxis. Yep. But hey, how about we take taxi concept and we don't have to buy any of the cars and pay the maintenance, but we create an app because yep. you have techno savvy and then we can create something that is like a taxi, functions like a taxi, gets us paid like a taxi, but we don't have to own any of these vehicles. And then voila, you've collaborated with something really huge of a concept like an Uber. And then other people are like, well, they doing it. We can do it too. <laughs> you have a lift. Yep. And so it like, we have to get to a space where I think business and specifically black businesses, our traumas are keeping us from thinking that we can go forward in these things. Like, and we cannot connect with each other on a deep, intimate level yep. to, to, if you can't have a conversation with the girl in the gym and she does nothing for you, because you, I, I don't know her like that. You definitely can't, you're not ready to have a conversation with someone and oh, pitch I'm them. So your business. You said that. I'm so glad you said that. So. I'm going I'm to I'm be quick. <laughs> Breathe. Yeah. I need you to take a breath because your face. I need like, y'all to get rid of this mentality of everyone trying to steal from me. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Transparency, transparency, transparency. 
you will never get what you need from someone or truly probably need from someone without being transparent. Let's say I'm a race car driver, right? And I have a problem with turn number three. And I go to my coach. Well, I, I, I'll be trans. Let me be transparent. I am afraid of making this turn. I have trouble with this turn, but I'm afraid because it's one of the fastest turns on the track. But when I go to my coach, I say, hey, you know, coach, I'm just having a little trouble with turn number three. Can, can you give me some coaching tips? That advice is going to be different than if I say, coach, I'm going to be honest with you. you know, I have some fear with turn three, man. It's, it's the fastest turn on the track. You know, my heart start racing. My blood pressure goes up. I'm just afraid I'm going to crash, man. That's why I'm having trouble with that turn. You're going to advise that person completely differently if they come at you like that. People can't really help you if you don't really honestly tell them what's going on and what the problem is. Like you want a watered down solution because you're afraid to put yourself out there. You're afraid to tell the truth and truly be honest with people. That's your personal business. Um, the other side of things for those of you saying, well, what if they grind me? What if I don't trust them? Blah, blah, blah. If you are surround, if you're going to people for advice that you don't trust, you're around the wrong set of people. Either you're around the wrong set of people or you're not being open and honest enough to find out who they really are and what they really have to offer you. So it could be on them. It could be on you. Um, the other thing I want, God dang it. I lost it again. What was I going to say? I had a brain fart, but the transparency thing is super. Oh yeah. yeah I, I remember it now. It's super big. Yeah, Number two. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number two. Part of my language. Step your fucking game up. Oh, 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 big, big And big, let me let me tell you why I say that. <laughs> y'all people with y'all, oh, they might steal from me. I ain't talking to them. How about you go on legal zoom, get you a legal zoom account, they have documents on there. Learn what an NDA is. Start having people bring your business to your conversation. Yo, man, I want to talk to you about this business idea, but I need you to sign this non disclosure agreement. If you going if since you since you so afraid to talk to everybody, cup, be smart and figure out how to cover yourself legally so you won't have to worry about it so you can have these conversations. Since you want to be in business, since you got this million dollar idea, walk around and treat it with the respect that it deserves. If this is a million dollar idea, where's your NDA? Where's your paperwork? Where's your contracts? Some of y'all talking this stuff like people going to steal from you, you ain't got not now piece of anything written down. So, <laughs> no they're not going to take you seriously anyway. But I'll take someone way more serious if they say, yo, Rob, I need you to sign this, this, and this, and then we can talk about it. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> I'm going to look at you way differently than a casual conversation. But y'all need to step. And you should step that game up anyway. If you out here right. trying to do, quote, unquote, do business, like. Elevate. Yes. And again, LegalZoom.com. Hi, LegalZoom. Um, check them out. You can get your LLC on there. You can get your S Corp. You can do all that stuff on there and they get, they have a library of files. They have different documents. You can fill out. The wording is there. All you do is put names and dates and then you can print it. Contract. Bong. Done. Just saying. All right. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Y'all done pissed him off. Now what? What am I supposed to do with this? He got him hot and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Uh, elevate in your thinking. I think that we cannot keep blaming other people. We cannot keep, um, like passing the book or p passing the blame of why things didn't happen. Because even if it is their fault, that gives you no power in the situation. There's some things that have happened to me that are, I mean, they get low, they get bad and they happen to me, but I cannot stay there. Like I, it, it's impactful. It doesn't, you're not forgetting it, but you, where is my power there? If I stay there and I pitch a tent and I create a home, I'm creating a home in negative energy, a negative space, a space that doesn't amplify me. So why would I, why would you want to live there? Would you, would you build your house? in a mosquito infested space. Hmm. No, you wouldn't. Like you wouldn't, you would not build on, on land that unless you did something, you would have to eradicate the problem. Yep. And then you build your house. 
So the same goes in life. These are natural processes that we just have to learn how to transition to, to our lives. You would not, if, if ants was covering the property, like you would not build there. You would not just go in and move in furniture into a space that is covered, infested with ants. So you would first get rid of the ants, then consider, are they permanently gone or is this a temporary fix? Like you have to assess your life with the same tenacity. And I think that when we really decide like, you know, this is what I want and this is what I'm going after. Like my mama, I love my family, but nobody's exempt. And I, I tell them that because I get one shot at this thing called life. Yes. I get to do this. This is my first time living life never done it before and I really want it to be an intentional shot I want to when I die I want it to have meaning and purpose and not purpose because of a bank account like yes but I want purpose in how I live my life what I what I wanted I mean some stuff you just want to enjoy your life now yeah. You can't enjoy this later. You can't enjoy this when you die. You can't enjoy this in heaven or hell. Like, you can't enjoy it. And we have to stop being so super spiritual and super and, and, and pessimistic and conspiracy theory to the max. Like, you have to have a level of balance no matter where, where you anchor yourself, whether it's uh, faith or not. Like, I am a spiritual person, and I have a very deeply rooted spiritual background, but I'm not praying for everything. Everything ain't a prayer. Like, you pray, and you be done with it. You trust, the, you trust in God that God, because I brought it to you, you now know. You don't need a reminder. Like... You, and then you go do the work. And when you hit points in, in your life where it's like, I'm not sure, you go back and say, hey, uh, I know you remember what I talked to you about last week? So I'm really not sure what to do this week. Can, can I get some direction here? That don't mean you sit on, on the prayer for forever. Like, no. So I don't know. We got real preachy real quick. But. It is in, it is very important that we 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 get out of the ways of ourselves. I'm passionate about it, because we both heard enough. Yes. People, we you and I both have heard enough people bullshitting. We've heard enough of it. We've seen it. We've heard all the excuses, and we see for ourselves just dipping our toe in it. Just dipping my toe in social media, I see the impact and the power that it has, and the opportunities that are there. If some people would just get off their ass and do what they need to do. Y'all have no idea. And it's funny. I, it's sad to it's sad to hear and see people with great ideas with zero execution. Because it's like, yo, you could really do that. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm doing this. I can help you, but I need to see where's your initiative? Where's your get up and go? I don't need to run this for you. Because if I need to run this for you, we need to talk about how you're going to compensate me accordingly. That's a whole different right, thing than working consulting. together. And if you guys yeah. need consulting, please in DM me. I offer consulting. Like, and that's for real. <laughs> the plug. Like, it was a the shameless plug, plug at that. <laughs> Where People can they find you help. again? They can find me at Exposure, E-X-P-O-Z-H-E-R on Instagram. DM me. Uh, info exposure at gmail.com for a consultation. Because if you have an idea and you really have no idea how to get started, let somebody know. Like, yes. no one's judging you. I didn't know. Rob didn't know. We didn't, Damn, know. Sure we, didn't know. One day there was a download and it's like, I think I want to start a podcast. What'd that mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then you go Googling and you go down the research hole and you figure it out. So tell somebody and get out of the way with all of these, these excuses. And their excuses because they we tell them to ourselves so that we are comfortable in our current state. And it's a coping mechanism. You basically tell yourself that you're too old because that's something you can't change. And it eases your soul to think that I shouldn't try it. Or if I try, I'm already too old, so I might not be able to do it. But there's a lot of old people doing remarkable things. The yes. lady that Rihanna handpicked to be over her whole uh, uh, campaign for Fendi. She was like 70-something years old as a model, first-time modeling. 
Yeah. And Ri Riri got her out here popping, honey, because this is beautiful. With her gray hair, long. So you're never too old. You're not too anything. If you have breath, then you're just in time. You're going to attract the right person. If you have the, the right idea, person. it's yeah. just in time. Yeah, you're gonna. your energy will attract the right people. Case in point, I, me and Jessica have known each other since college. But we're just yeah. now connecting now. You know what I'm saying? Like this year, yeah, like, what, a month it. ago, a month and a half ago. October. October. And I interviewed her before, twice before, right? Yeah. Twice before. So that energy has a, but you know what's funny? If she would have came to me then and said she wanted to be part of the podcast or I would have came to her, it wouldn't have worked because I wasn't ready. I know I wasn't ready. My and stuff wasn't, wasn't together. Either. My foundation wasn't together. But that's the thing because she had done the work. I had done the work. Now the time is right. Now it's a fit. Yeah. So follow you your work. flow. Follow your flow. And you got to trust in your own process. You got to trust that what you're doing is working for you. Even if it's not showing you what you thought it should be showing you in this moment. Like if we, if we had stopped in our own individual flows a year and a half ago, we wouldn't be here. Like you, even though that year and a half was not a straight shot by any means, like I did a lot of looping, 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 looping play that back. <laughs> and it's like, I'm just getting to this space of like, dang, Okay, I get it. Like, I was the super senior of my own life. Like, mm. sometimes I have to take a whole year over in my own life, mm. like, to figure some stuff out. And I'm okay with that because I set such positive intentions for my life that I know that God has me. I know that what I petition out of this world, out of this universe, it is coming back to me. Like, like sometimes... If I'm just low on a blessing, I just bless somebody else. Let me put one out there mm -hmm. so that it can ricochet because I know it's coming back to me at some point. And we have to trust that. We have to get out of our way. And I think a lot of us, I mean, some days I'm in my own way and I call you and you talk me off and it's like vice versa. So stay motivated, stay up, vibrate high. So... That's all I have, Rob. Anything else? That's all I got. Well, before we wrap out, we also want to make sure that you guys check out our affiliates. I'm going to let Rob, I'm going to kick it back to you for that. Yes, our affiliates. Don't forget about our affiliates. Garner's Garden, who sells organic products, uh, skin care, hair care, oral health care. I just got some for my birthday. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tamika. Uh, yes, um, I got some products for them. Um, they are great products. I like them. They make me feel great and wonderful. Ch so check out Garner's Garden. Retro Mimi. I'm a gamer, huge gamer. Oh, about to be gaming so crazy over these next two weeks. This I don't have to work. But they sell handheld emulation consoles. So you can put your favorite ROMs on a micro SD card, pop them into the console of your choice, and take your retro gaming experience on the go. Make sure you check them out. Black water. They sell water that is literally black. It is the minerals that they put in there that turns the water black. It comes in great flavors. I think they have a sale right now. Y'all might want to check them out because they do like buy 12, get 12 free or a case and get a case free. Check them out. It's really flavorful, really good water. And last but not least, for some passive investment, Acre Gold, where you can get a monthly subscription towards purchasing bars of gold. So make sure you check them out. Oh, I should have one coming next month. Hey, that'll be my second one. Yeah. So, shouts out to our affiliates. Those links will be in the description, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's been real. And without further ado, we have come to the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please uh, reach out in our Facebook group. Uh, you can DM both me or Rob. Uh, any comments, if you have questions, uh, tell, tell us how you like the switch, because I was hella uncomfortable so i would love to hear <laughs> feedback um, <laughs> it would be good to hear like um from you guys i am enjoying being here i am enjoying speaking with you and i am looking forward to 2021 20, the next 12 months so that's gonna be interesting that's it yeah peace peace out